I was born in Sydney, um, 1958. I think growing up, I was very lucky. I had parents who both were scientists. They actually met um, looking down the microscope. So it was probably not unusual that we, there's, I've got three siblings that we all grew up looking down the microscope, having lots of animals around, going out, looking in the bush. So it was a childhood that was very much steeped in nature, though our parents also um, gave us a lot of literature and music. So we grew up in a very creative household, I suppose, in that we were encouraged to, to make art. And my mother was also an artist as well as a scientist. And um, yeah, the ch our childhood was really spent outdoors a lot of the time. I think growing up with um, animals around us in live and dead, because we had lots of pets. I mean, our house was, I mean, we never had a bath because in the bath we had axolotls, we had turtles over the years, goldfish. So we grew up always having showers because the bath was always taken up by the animals. Um, I was very lucky having parents who took us out. Most weekends we'd go walking in the bush, but we also live relatively close to the coast. And so we would come to the beach quite often for a surf and a swim, but often we would go to Long Reef, which is a lovely rock platform. Um, and our mother being a biologist and zoologist would show us how to carefully lift up the rocks and look for organisms. We'd find wonderful things that you don't find anymore now actually because even in, well I guess it's 40 years now, a lot of things have disappeared. And so you'd lift up rocks and find these incredibly coloured nudibranchs and you'd find brittle stars, all sorts of organisms. She'd tell us how to carefully put the rocks back so we didn't disturb the environment. but. That really nurtured in us a love of, of nature and I'm sure that's come through in my work over the years. I think the idea of doing a work about the rabbit as an invasive species probably goes a long way back when in 1980 I actually published a book of drawings and text for a children's book called Australian Mammals. And in that book, there's a lot of reference to the effect of the f introduction of the fox and the rabbit and the sheep grazing of sheep on the population of native species. So that's always been in my mind in all that time. And I think growing up with an awareness of the natural environment and knowing what a powerful effect these invasive species have had on, on the native species here is, has been quite an influence. Yes, perhaps the difficult thing with making a work about rabbits is the image people have of the rabbit being a cute, cuddly animal, and particularly because they are pets, though increasingly in the suburbs here we see a lot of feral rabbits and, and councils are having a lot of trouble actually getting rid of them. So I think the more sort of difficult side of the rabbit is about their numbers. And so initially when I thought of making the work to have, you know, a lot of rabbits was, was going to give the idea of just how bad the impact would be. Because I was limited with space, I ended up doing the work here as six rabbits. Having looked at a number of photographs, I went online and just looked at lots of photographs of rabbits and perhaps having had a rabbit as a pet, I don't know. They're just beautiful animals to look at and the rabbits in the way that I've portrayed them, I've actually elongated their ears. They probably look a little bit more like hairs, but they've got a beautiful form. To begin, an idea, I normally will grab my, my book of ideas, which is this big fat book, which any idea that I have will just go directly into here. And so initially, when I worked on the rabbits, <clears throat> I, I looked at library books and went online and I do little sketches in my book, just pretty small little sketches, just to give me an idea of the sort of poses that I might choose. And so this will just be the beginning, so I'll then work the piece up 
in clay from that. I'm a sculptor and so that's the, the way I work. I mean, I think ideas can be brought across in a number of ways. I could have written a piece about it, I could paint something, but as a sculptor, that's what I do. I think there's something too about making sculptures of animals where they can be quite present. When I was making them, I had, I was working on my dining room table and so I had six rabbits at various stages of being finished on my dining room table and every time I came into the room they would almost leap off the table at me. So I think there's something about the sculptural form that is very good in conveying a real presence that perhaps would not be conveyed in the same way by a painting or a photograph. I'm just thinking about the rabbits now as a group there's something about the different movements that allows the work to travel through time because obviously the danger with sculpture is you've got a static form and the thing with this work is that you, I needed to convey some kind of movement forwards. One rabbit clearly isn't going to say very much on its own. By having a group of rabbits, there's an, for one, you can actually indicate a number of attitudes. So. Between the six rabbits, there are quite a number of different poses. So some of the rabbits are sitting upright, their ears are alert, they're really looking out for predators and they're, they're wary. Other ones are moving forward, they're inquisitive. And so by having six rabbits, it did allow me to show a number of gestures. There's something to the rabbits coming together the way they are as a bunch, which made it interesting and has a force and an energy that one rabbit wouldn't have had. I initially began with just one rabbit. I actually found a photograph, you know, I went to the library. I remember going to the library and, and just looking for books on rabbits and found one particular pose which I liked very much and drew it. And there was something about the pose, the, the lines, the combination of lines in the pose of the rabbit that was just quite aesthetically beautiful. It reminded me almost of an Egyptian, Egyptian, sculpture, some of the beautiful iconic forms that you get, you know, some of their beautiful dogs and cats. I don't think they did rabbits, but there was something elegant in the lines in this particular rabbit that I drew and that was the starting place for me. Then after that I went online and just did a, quite a number of sketches based on different poses. So I probably started with one rabbit and then all the other rabbits came along quite quickly after that, the way rabbits do in the wild. <laughs> As an artist, to have your work exhibited in a social history museum and not in an art gallery, because I suppose you've got a different public People go there not with the intention to see an artwork but for other reasons and I was, there was some concern for me that it would, the, the work would become an artefact and no longer be an artwork with something to say and I was very lucky that the curators were very aware of this and supportive that my work retained its integrity which is one of the reasons why we had this perspex barrier put in front of the rabbits to indicate that there is some idea about what's happening here. Also just in naming the work, so it's not an artifact, but it's got, there's an ideology behind it. So Terra Australis, New World Order, um, which gives an idea about what that work might be. And over the years, I'm finding that more and more of my work is being shown in a museum context rather than in an art gallery. And I actually like this because I think Art galleries sometimes are quite exclusive or a lot of people who won't go to art galleries. So in a way it means that your work is being seen by a greater cross-section of people. <laughs> <laughs>